It's getting close to the end of Saturday, September 23rd, 2023. How did college football go? I'm happy and proud to announce that all the work I did this month getting college football to do something has paid off, and it did something today. It worked today. And, I mean, Northwestern, Northwestern was, I believe, the second biggest underdog we had on here. Forget that we went 45 and 17 on the money line, winning 72%. Forget that if you bet every game on this list, you won money on the left hand. Forget all that. Look at our big underdogs. Guess what happened? Top three big underdogs all covered, four out of five covered. Mississippi held this close against Alabama in the first half. Uh, Northwestern wins down 21 points in the second half, comes back with an injured quarterback, it looked like, limping quarterback to come back and win. College kids get hurt, then they're they're fine the next drive. That's It must be great being in college and having that kind of youthful exuberance. They win a game in overtime. Unbelievable. I had them. I bet, and I bet them plus 11, and they look like they weren't going to cover it down 21 in the second half, and then they came back roaring. So awesome. Algorithm does awesome things there. Um, not all of them were awesome. And there was a string of not good things here. Memphis doesn't cover six and a half, loses by seven, I think. They kept trying to come back, but they couldn't get there. Mississippi State, no. UCLA, no. Central Florida, no. Western Kentucky covers. Notre Dame should have won this game. What a game, this Notre Dame-Ohio State game. Comes down to the last drive. Oh, man. Notre Dame stands them up, stands them up, and with like no with no seconds left, they run the ball in, and it barely goes on the line, Ohio State. Wow, just what a game. Notre Dame at least covers the plus three and a half. That's not a problem, but they, they can't hold on to win. But algorithm – anyway, point is, so it's not just – it's not just that a lot of things went right and a lot of this made sense to the algorithm so when you're looking top down by projected margin of victory this number over here this is the number we care about because it says how many points one team is supposed to beat the other one by so these teams are supposed to win and as you can see i said hey you're gonna win like you know 19 out of the first 20 guess what you win 19 out of the first 21, uh, 18 out of the first 20. And you lose two of them, and Southern Illinois is popping out at you as a terrible pick. Let me tell you about the Southern Illinois game. Because you couldn't do anything about South Alabama at negative 650. You weren't going to get that right. Like, they lost. They lost by... They lost by four points somehow. That sucks. That's the one that you can't do anything about that you lost. This Northern Illinois game, you could do something about. It said the strength of schedule comparison was negative 21. Said they'd played much. Um, Northern Illinois had played really not good teams, and Tulsa had played good teams. And sure enough, that even the algorithm win percentage for Northern Illinois is a huge negative. Like There's so many reasons not to take Illinois here, according to what the algorithm says, except it gives them a nine-point advantage in points but it's because they've been playing crap teams Tulsa knocks them out and beats them holds them to almost no points and beats them 22 14 so this one you could have stayed away from under that logic you would have stayed away from some of these other big negatives like Oregon against Colorado I bet Colorado plus points they got destroyed Deion Sanders did nothing I would have stayed away from Marshall even though that one because that's minus 22 I said stay away from Maryland because they were minus 14 but they win anyway Okay. Um, anyway, Fresno State's way up there, a terrible line. You can stay away from a, from Wake Forest. Here's an 11 and a 12. Anything worse than negative 10, this one, James Madison, which this game is, by the way, still going on. It's not over. That game is, looks like they might have won. It, they're up 45-38 with less than a minute left. So, okay. So let's back up and talk about why this had a good day. So it does win 19 out of the top 21. It does win 23 out of the top 27. And it shows you that you could have stayed away from at least this one. Could have stayed away from Wake Forest. Could 
You could potentially have stayed away from Mississippi, but plus the points you were supposed to take up. Massachusetts lost in overtime, another super close one. They came back to lose an OT. That would have been a nice one. I don't think the algorithm did a bad job here, but shit, it was close. Rice, I didn't watch much of that game. Notre Dame could have won. San Diego State cover. Texas Tech loses to West Virginia, but that's way down here. And a projected margin victory of one. So anything where the game is less than three points, which is going to be these games, I would say you can't really have a good gauge on the winner. And when you're looking over at the cumulative profit over here, it, it maxes out at a certain point. Um, basically, the max payout was 1.54 units, which no, that's not true. Wait a minute, that's different. Oh, I should change this formula. Yeah, cumulative max payout is actually going to be here. I'll show you what we're talking about. We're going to do this. No, can't be 372. Doesn't make any sense. It's 3.72, maybe. No, not some, max. Sorry, we want to do the max. Max is going to give you the highest number of cumulative profit that we had. It's 2.65 units. And that happens right at the end? No way. It happens by betting every almost every single game and stopping way, way down here because you hit some underdogs. Interesting. So we're sort of, where's the Northwestern game? How far down is that? I think you have to have that, right? Northwestern games are all the way down here. Yeah, that's at a plus 340, and that really, really helps out. Yeah, that's what drives profit up from negative. So it really wasn't good down here until you catch that Northwestern game. That's why it's really good to pick teams that had really good lines. Was it Louisville, I guess? No, um, Louisiana, I think it was, against uh, Louisiana Tech, uh, whoever it was, against um, Nebraska. That one, they did cover. They came back and, and covered and only lost by, I believe, 14. So anyway, there's a lot. There's just a lot of good in here, guys. It's saying that premium stuff top down won a lot, especially when strength of schedule was confirming. And that's why when you see these strings of wins, some of these lines were bettable. You, you really hardly miss except for South Alabama. App State loses a close one in Wyoming. Does not go over. Oh, yeah, over-under is the other thing I wanted to talk about. So I built this over-under comparison. And up until one of the very last games that went to overtime, unfortunately, the Akron-Indiana game, up until that game, the extreme unders were doing great that means when the over under variance number here is really really low like minus 13 we said this there's 13 points less than the listed over under the game goes under and we win it see like this one this one this one this one's wrong and i bet you that's the Akron game think so. Yeah, I think that is the, they were going under the whole time until they went to overtime and both scored touchdowns. This one wins. I mean, this is incredible. That means when you got an over under variance number of, of work lower than negative 10, it won every single time, except for the game that went to overtime and had two teams score touchdowns in overtime to screw you up. Somebody Akron missed a field goal at the end of regulation that would have ended this game. And, and I would have won my bet. I had a bet on that. And by this point, I was betting all the unders because I saw they were all winning. And that's so sad. But but that's the kind of thing that gets you beat that's out of your control. This game goes over time and it goes over. But otherwise, man, the unders were just crushing life. The over did not. That game with uh, Wyoming and App State and Wyoming did not go there. But those ones, I mean, that's that's incredible. Like when you when you can hit you know, drastically, we hit all those. It was like a Jacksonville State game, the UCLA game, the Georgia State game from Thursday night, the Tennessee game, which 
barely, barely, barely stayed under 59 and a half at 59. So that was a close one. Yeah, the Indiana Akron game, you lose because it goes to overtime. And then the Jacksonville State game, the lowest one of all of them, ends up only having 21 points in it. You see that, everybody? That's what the algorithm does. That's the beauty of the algorithm right there. Just a purely technical question. Hey, algorithm, what's the game that has the largest point disparity where our, our algorithm chooses the under? It's a Jacksonville State versus Eastern Michigan. We said there'd be 32 of a projected 51 points and there ends up being 21. Yeah, crush it, crush it. So you do that stuff like that next week for sure. So the so I'm saying the algorithm did some awesome, awesome things today. Um, it showed profit all around and the things that it did miss, some of them had reasons. And going forward, if you, if you wanna highlight things that are making sense, you go home teams, where the projected margin of victory is greater than six. Oh, what? Hold on. The projected margin of victory. No, not algorithm 1%. The projected margin of victory is greater than six. 10 and three, losing this game you wouldn't play in Northern Illinois and losing with a Wake Forest all the way down there. That is not profitable, actually, because the lines are so bad. So you don't necessarily bet this. And some of these games aren't even over yet. No, I mean, you just read it game for game is what you do. You focus on the over-unders, and you focus on a lot of these teams that are supposed to win up here. The higher they are on the list, the more likely they win. And when you get down to the bottom there, You show all of them, you see that it does get checkered down at the bottom more, right? It still did better than average. There's less red pink than there is green. There's still more streaks of green and your chunks of red are never more than two in a row, which is pretty good, right? Like this, this down here at the bottom looks like random noise right here. See that three and three? That's random noise. This is not random noise. Look at Northwestern was not random noise. And this is not random noise. This is another way to see that. How many of your teams are, are covering the spread down here? Of those 15, it's 12 and three, everybody. The bottom of the list. But then you have a chunk of losses here. So this is more random noisy. But not here. This is good. All the way up top. And watch out for the games with the bad strength of schedules. And this is, of course, perfect. So you could say that the algorithm won the top 14 games on the list, assuming Southern Cal and Fresno State hold, which are going on right now. Uh, I think there's a Washington game also going on right now. Um, 1231, 1029. USC's up 2110. Akron lost. Hold on. Akron lost to Indiana, everybody. That game in overtime that would never end and ruined my overtime. That game ended up being in week five, Akron losing with 27, losing to Indiana's 29. Let's see if that changed anything. Still 45 and 17. I guess we had Akron and we lost. I think so. Anyway, guys. No, we did not have Akron. We had Indiana. Um, anyway, yeah, sorry. All I want to say is, after all this long video, I'm, I'm glad I, I paid attention to some of these games today and watched the algorithm mature into something that's now doing something. And it's working more accurately because we're taking into account injuries, we're doing some point projections based on players, and we're looking at current schedule where it's conference games only when we're looking at certain scores home and away. And because of that, as we progress into the future weeks, it's going to keep doing smart things where it picks up just abnormal stuff like scores on games and teams that should win and a lot of them covering. All right. So good luck. I hope your picks won today. Might Some of my picks won today, not all of them, but some of them did. So it was, it was a good day and mail your picks be winning.